you look at my life from the outside, I'd say it'd look pretty sweet. And it is, don't get me wrong, but my life of working from home, surfing when I want, running successful businesses and making films for a living didn't start off all that easy. And if I'm honest, it's still not that easy. Oh, what the f***? But there is something incredibly powerful about breaking out of the system. The whole world, I think, is not very conducive to individual freedom financially, socially, biologically, neurologically. So taking charge of how you spend your time on a day-to-day -day basis in that strange field of what we would call work is, I think, the first step in taking back your independence from those who would try to keep it from you. Now, this is not a conspiracy video. Today, I just thought I'd share my business situation and more importantly, some actionable tips to help you quit your day job and to start doing something you love. Oh, and of course, if you love your day job, don't worry, this video just might be a little interesting clip for you to watch. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel now and follow me on Instagram at Broccoli. In order to explain how to quit your day job to start doing something you love, I'm gonna to need to explain how my own business works because we'll be using this as a bit of an example for you throughout the video. Now, I've never shared this information before, so I don't know, feel privileged or something. My company is called Brock Creative Media. Within Brock Creative Media, we have four staff, including myself and a few subsidiary businesses. One is Kale Brock. This is kind of my personal brand, if you will, although I hate referring to it that way. This includes the three books that I've written, the film that I've made and the ones I'm currently making, the consulting that I do, the online courses that I have, the events, the affiliate marketing, the speaking gigs, etc., etc. This probably makes up 70% of Brock Creative Media from a revenue perspective. Another business is Nice Life, the gut health store. This is an online store that I started early on in my career and it's been kicking goals ever since, especially when we started working exclusively with some established US brands as their distributor here in Australia. This online store is like Gut Health Central and is completely run by one of my staff in a different state. It probably makes up 20% of my business. The last part of the business is the surfing channel I started when I was fresh out of my baby-faced TV days. Ah, uh, yeah, don't show that picture ever again. We originally filmed this big surfing tutorial production with the plan of selling it to shops to help them sell surfboards. And we nearly broke it a huge deal, but it fell through. So we ended up uploading it to YouTube and it's obviously taken off and doing quite well. This business makes up about 10% of Brock Creative Media, but takes up probably 25% of my time. But there's a reason for that, which we'll go into later. So that, my friends, is Brock Creative Media. Okay, now we've got that technical explanation out of the way, let's dissect it a little, shall we? What do you notice about that setup? Well, the first thing you should notice is that it's highly varied and offers multiple streams of income. This is our first step in being able to quit our day job, the ability to replace the income that we're planning on giving up. It's important to point out that there are some exceptions to this rule of multiple revenue streams, right? Someone out there made it big with one idea or business and that was their financial titan for the rest of their life, Facebook, da 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 I get it, but if you study the wealthy, you'll find that multiple revenue streams are a constant factor in their success. Tom Corley wrote a book called Rich Habits, and in it he studied 233 self-made millionaires, finding that 65% had three streams of income, 45% had four streams of income, and 29% have five or more streams of income. Richard Branson is another successful entrepreneur who recommends having multiple revenue streams. Most of us only have one revenue stream, our nine to five job, right? 
it's probably one of the most insecure ways to be, financially speaking, because if something goes wrong, you lose your job, for instance, you're stuck, you've got no money coming in at all. So it's the same with your upcoming side hustles. Don't put all your eggs in the one basket. Think about different business ideas in different markets, which you can capitalize on. For me, it was creating Nice Life, the gut health store, originally as a side income whilst I was working at a network television station and planning to make an exit. Then I started doing freelance production work, speaking gigs, acting work, and then we started How To Rip, the surfing YouTube channel I spoke about. And all of a sudden, I had three separate businesses on the go. So step one is to write down three to five business ideas that are different enough so that if one market crashes, the others would still continue unaffected. Don't be too strict on yourself here. Just think freely without worrying which business is most viable for now. This is just brainstorming. Okay, I already know what's coming up for you. I get it. What kind of business can I run? I have no experience at all, etc., etc. Excuses, excuses, excuses. You are an expert in something. If you just sit around all day and do nothing at all, you're an expert in sitting around all day and doing nothing at all. If you're a stay-at-home mum, you're an expert at being a stay-at-home mum. Do you see what I mean here? Don't overthink this part of the process. You're an expert in something. As Tim Ferriss wrote in the 4-Hour Workweek, you only need to be more knowledgeable than the person you're servicing in order to be bringing value to the table. And that is really what we're after, value. The best kind of businesses which offer exponential, scalable potential for income are information-based. Kale Brock as a brand, and again, I hate calling it that, everything is information product-based. How to Rip, the YouTube channel, it's all information product. Nice Life, although we sell tangible, physical products, it benefits from all the non-physical products we're producing over at Kale Brock. So step two is to reflect on your list now. Take the list of ideas in front of you and consider those that fit into, or could be turned into, an information product of some kind. Maybe it's an online course, maybe it's a book or a video series or a podcast. Put a big tick next to those ideas. The next thing to do, step three, is to consider what you love. Now, there might be a few things which come to mind here straight away, and look, chocolate doesn't count and neither does the dog. No, I'm, do I'm talking more about macro loves, like what you're passionate about. And I mean like passionate about enough to withstand the trials and tribulations that are inherent in turning that love into a business. Ask yourself these questions. What do I daydream about? What do I spend money on outside of daily necessities? What would I spend my time doing if money weren't a factor? Now, step four, cross-reference these new loves that you've just identified with the original business idea list. I can almost guarantee that some of them cross over and that is the business idea or those are the business ideas you should be chasing. If you didn't find a crossover, that's fine. Write a new list based off of your love list and go from there. Step number five, we need to take a moment to work out how much money exactly you need in order to quit your day job. Presuming you wanna quit your day job, that is. We do this last because I really don't want money to get in the way too much of your brainstorming initially. I'd rather see someone and I'd rather be someone who earns less doing what they love as opposed to earning more doing something you don't really enjoy that much. This is going to give us a tangible goal to work toward when we're building our side hustles. How much money do you need to live? What are your monthly and then weekly and then daily expenses that you need to cover? When I finished up at my network television job, I traveled the world. I chose to travel in cheaper places like Southeast Asia and Africa because I could take advantage of the positive exchange rates and my daily income requirement was thus much less. How much money would I need for food, accommodation, surfboards, and then any emergencies which might occur? I landed on about $100 Australian per day, a pretty safe number. $100 per day equals $700 per week or $2,800 per month. It's super attainable and a humble income to start shooting for. 
Even if this doesn't allow you to fully quit your day job, it may allow you to start working a couple of days a week instead of full time. And this would free up some time to commit to building your side hustles into big revenue rivers as opposed to streams. Now, if this number isn't your quitting number, separate it. Have a part-time number, for instance, $100 a day and a quit the job and run out the door screaming freedom sort of number like $200 per day. It's all gonna depend on your situation. In review, step one, write down three to five business ideas that are different enough so that if one market crashes, the others would still continue unaffected. Step two, reflect and alter the list to create businesses which produce information products like online courses, books, or videos. Step three, consider what you love. Ask yourself these questions. What do you daydream about? What do you spend your money on outside of daily necessities? What would you do if money weren't an issue? Step four, cross-reference your love list with your business ideas list and circle those that cross over. If nothing does, reconsider. Step five, work out how much money you need every day from your new side hustles in order to go, one, part-time in your day job, and two, quit altogether. I remember the moment when I left all forms of being employed by someone else and totally committed to my own businesses. It was scary, but at the same time, I had this reckless abandon which somehow enabled me to feel excitedly confident at the same time. And I think this unfounded and completely illogical confidence really held me in good stead to withstand the inherent ups and downs of being an entrepreneur. Nowadays, I feel like I'm living my dream, but at the same time, I'm blissfully dissatisfied with my current situation and I want more growth still. And that's maybe the most interesting part of this whole journey of mine, that regardless of how far you've come, there's always room to grow and move forward as a person. And that may be the most poignant part of running your own business. These challenges and opportunities for growth aren't that hard to come by, they're plentiful. This video was brought to you by Video Marketing Mastery. It's my online course all about producing your own video marketing content for your business, your product, or whatever it is you want to turn into your side hustle. The link is in the description below, or you can head to kalebrock.com for more info. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at kalesbroccoli, and I'll see you soon.